Welcome to the VexIQ Challenge Referee Training Videos. We've created this short video series to help VexIQ Challenge referees prepare for the current game and to give VexIQ Challenge participants a better understanding of both the referee's job and gameplay. Our first episode, Chapter 1, is an overview of the referee position. We'll discuss what it takes to be a Vex IQ Challenge referee and the key roles involved. Refereeing is a very rewarding volunteer position. Just like at sporting events, the referees enforce the rules of the game. However, unlike traditional sporting events, Vex IQ Challenge referees actually help the participants avoid breaking the rules. This is one of the key elements of being a Vex IQ Challenge ref. We want referees who will warn teams about infractions ahead of time to educate them as they play and to help them have as much fun with their competition experience as possible. The key roles of a referee are 1. Reading and fully understanding the Vex IQ Challenge Game Manual. The game manual contains complete and official details of all game, tournament, and robot roles. Along with referees, coaches should have a thorough knowledge of this document and should help students reference it when needed. The game manual can be downloaded from roboticseducation.org or vexiq.com. All referees should review them prior to the event if possible. Copies of the rules should be made available at the event for reference, and we also recommend downloading the free VIQC Hub app so you can have a copy on your mobile device. The rules are your best friend. 2. Making sure the field is set up correctly for each match. We'll discuss this more in detail in chapters 2 and 3. 3. Being cognizant of the schedule and helping to keep the event running on time. This is one area where you need to work closely with the event organizers and other volunteers to keep things flowing. Remember that team experience should always come first, so if you do need to hurry things along a bit, be sure to remain friendly and encouraging at all times when working with students. 4. Ensuring that teams are placed correctly at the field and prepared to play. This includes making sure that their robots and controllers are turned on and ready to go. 5. Consistently enforcing the rules of the game as written. Most of the time, this will mean reminding teams of match start time, match stop time, and especially communicating the controller handoff time during teamwork and robot skills matches. You will also need to know what the rules are regarding human-robot interaction and any specific rules pertaining to the current year's game, like G17 this year. These topics are all covered in chapters 4 through 7. 6. Completing and submitting an accurate score sheet at the end of each match. Depending on the size of the event, you may have a dedicated scoring referee, or it may be the head referee's responsibility. In either case, the goal is to be as efficient and accurate as possible. We'll discuss scoring further in Chapter 6. 7. Discussing rulings with teams in a friendly manner as needed. This should always be a positive learning opportunity, even if you have to deliver a difficult message for any reason. Remember, teams have worked hard to get to this point, so let's celebrate their effort at all times. When you do have to explain a difficult ruling, take the teams aside to a quiet place if possible. While it may be appropriate for an adult to be present, especially when working with younger students, make sure that you're always talking directly with the students, not over them. And always reference the specific relevant rule in the game manual using either the VIQC Hub app or a printed copy to make sure that this is a learning experience for the future and not just a punishment. That's all for Chapter 1, but make sure you check out our other videos on specific refereeing topics in this series.